Spring can only mean one thing, a trip to Benelux and plenty of mud, sweat and cobbles. The cobble classics hold a special place in the hearts of fans and riders alike and are some of the longest standing races on the calendar. The big stones, also known as pave, make for a brutal parkour and some exciting racing. Beginning at the end of February, the cobble season runs all the way up to mid-April with Paris-Roubaix. Are you new to the pave? Or do you just need a refresher? Here's Cycling News' beginner's guide to the cobbled classics. The double header of Omloop Het Newsblad and Colonel Brossa Kerner in the last weekend of February is the official curtain raiser for the cobbled races. With many heading to the Southern Hemisphere and the Middle East for the early part of the season, the two races are often the first chance they have to race in Europe, and it could be a baptism of wind, rain and cold. While the two come hand in hand, the races often play out quite differently. Originally known as Het Volk, until the newspaper that sponsored the race changed its name, Omloop Het Newsblad tends to be a more selective race than Colonel Brossa Kerner, with a shorter run from the final climb, making it easier for a breakaway to succeed. After coming close two years previously, Greg Van Offermark won last year's edition from a four-man breakaway. Since 2006, a women's race has been run on the same day, with Lizzie Armitstead, now Lizzie Dignan, taking the victory last year. Colonel Brussel Kerner is a bit of a misnomer, as the race falls short of the Belgian capital by around 30 kilometres. With two local laps following the final climb, sprints are more likely to succeed, although Jasper Stuyven upset the form buck in 2016 with his 17 kilometre attack. Following the opening weekend, many of the big names head off elsewhere in Europe for races such as Paris-Nice and Terreno Adriatico. The classics still roll on with a number of smaller races, including Le Samine for both men and women on March 1st, the first major race in the Wallonia region. The 16 cobble sectors featured on the route have led to it being known as the little brother of Paris-Roubaix. Former Roubaix winner Nicky Terpstra is the defending men's champion, while Chantelle Black won the women's race last season. Tours Door Van Vest Vlaanderen is next up on March 5th. Originally called the Tri Dag de Van Vest Vlaanderen and taking place, as the name suggests, over three days, it is now a single day affair. The new route will start in Newport and finish in Ittegem, mirroring the final stage of the original race, which has been won by Danny Van Poppel and Sean de Bee in previous years. The Ronde van Drenthe, just under a week later, has both a women's and men's event, with the former on the Women's World Tour calendar. The course is largely flat but several cobble sectors add to the challenge. For added interest, the riders must make multiple ascents of the Van Berg, a man-made climb built over a former landfill site and is the highest point in Drenthe. The Drenthe Ach Van Festival, a day later, is another women's race by the same organisers, which sends them over the Van Berg another two times. The flattish course means that the sprinters are again likely to come out on top. Nokura Kurse and the Hanzame Classic on March 15th and 17th round off the first part of the Cobble Classics as they take a brief break for Milan San Remo. Things ramp up again with the midweek Dvarsdor Vlanderen, another event with offerings for both the men's and women's pelotons. The race features several of the climbs that the riders will face at the Tour of Flanders, including the Leeburg, Berendries, the Old Quaremont, the Tienberg and the Paterberg. It's an unpredictable race that has seen some dramatic finishes, and last year required a photo finish to decide the winner, with Jens de Boucherer being awarded the honour ahead of Brian Kokar. From here on out, the races are building up towards the second monument of the season, the Tour of Flanders. E3 Harobeka on Friday, March 24th, is the first real view of how the contenders are shaping up ahead of Belgium's biggest race. In the last decade, only once has the winner of Flanders come from outside the top 10 at E3. Mikol Kwiatowski won it in fine fashion last year, beating eventual Flanders winner Peter Sagan in a two-man sprint. Gen Vervegen follows two days later and is often seen as the sprinter's classic, but it's still packed with hills and a bunch gallop is highly unlikely. It's a lot lighter on the cobbles than most of the Belgian races at this time of the year, but it's still a big part of the spring campaign for many. Former winners include Peter Sagan, Tom Bonin and John Degenkolb. Chantelle Black won the women's race last year after a dominant start to the season. Between Gent Vavagum and the Tour of Flanders sits a three days of the Panna. Most of the big hitters stay away from this often frenetic race, opting for a week of training instead. But riders such as Alexander Kristoff and Nicky Terpstra have been regular visitors in the past. 
It consists of four stages, with a split stage on the final day of racing and takes in some of the most famous climbs in the region. The Tour of Flanders on April 2nd is the biggest event on the Belgian calendar and brings out the crowds to match. It's a race of two parts, with much of the opening half on relatively flat roads. The first climb doesn't come until after 100 kilometers of racing, but it's a relentless series of 18 of them from there until the finish. This year we'll see the star move from Bruges to Antwerp and the return of the Mer van Gerardsbergen, which will feature in both the men's and women's races. The climb has been synonymous with the race and its revival was met with delight by many. Last year, both world champions found victory, with Peter Sagan leading a daring solo attack, while Lizzie Dignan edged out Emma Johansson for her win. Skelda Price splits the difference between Flanders and Roubaix a week later. It's not strictly a cobbled race, with only a very minor amount smattering the course. Some of the main cobble contenders are in attendance on the start line in Antwerp, but this is a day for the sprinters. Marcel Kittel has been the dominant rider at Skelda Price, with four victories to his name in recent years. Finally, it's Paris-Roubaix on April 9th. Unlike the Belgian races, there's not a climb to speak of, but the brutal, irregular sectors of cobbles always throw up a spectacular race. Its moniker of the Hell of the North gives a small insight as to what to expect if you should ride it. Last year's event was as dramatic as ever and resulted in the unexpected victory of Matt Heyman. The Australian outsprinted four-time winner Tom Bonin in the Roubaix Velodrome. Bonin, whose career has been so intrinsically linked with the race, will call an end to his career after this season's Paris-Roubaix. There are still a few cobbled races scattered throughout the remainder of the season, but it's Paris-Roubaix that brings down the curtain on the Spring Classics calendar.